Chapter 1 Spain, 1930 The two suspects sat on mismatched furniture in the white and almost featureless lounge, waiting for something to happen. Between them an archway led to a slim, windowless staircase, a dim recess that seemed to dominate the room, like a fireplace grown to unreasonable proportions. The staircase changed direction at its midpoint, hiding the upper floor from view and giving the impression that it led up to darkness and nothing else. It's hell, just waiting here. Megan was sitting to the right of the archway. How long does a siesta normally take, anyway? She walked over to the window. Outside, the Spanish countryside was an indistinct orange colour. It looked uninhabitable in the heat. An hour or two, but he's been drinking. Henry was sitting sideways in his chair, with his legs hooked over the arm and a guitar resting on his lap. Knowing Bunny, he'll be asleep until dinner time. Megan moved to the drinks cabinet and examined the bottles, carefully turning each one until all the labels were facing outwards. Henry took the cigarette from his mouth and held it up in front of his right eye, pretending to watch her through it, a mock telescope. You're breathing through your shoes again. She'd been pacing back and forth for most of the afternoon. The lounge, with its white tiles and white clean surfaces, reminded her of a doctor's waiting room. They could have been in a red-brick hospital back home, rather than a strange Spanish villa at the top of a ragged red hill. If I'm breathing through my shoes, she muttered, then you're walking with your mouth. A few hours earlier they'd been having lunch at a small tavern in the nearest village, a thirty-minute walk through the woods from Bunny's house. Bunny had stood up at the end of the meal, and they both immediately noticed how drunk he was. We need to have a conversation, he'd slurred. You've probably been wondering why I asked you here. There's something I've wanted to discuss for rather a long time. It was an ominous thing to say to his two guests, both entirely dependent on him in a country they'd never been to before. When we're at the villa, just the three of us. It had taken them almost an hour to walk back to the house, Bunny struggling up the hill like an old donkey, a grey suit against the red earth. It felt absurd now to think of the three of them in Oxford together all those years ago. He'd aged seemingly ten years more than they had. I need to rest, he drooled after letting them into the house. Give me some time to sleep. Then we can talk. So while Bunny had gone upstairs to sleep away the heat of the afternoon, Megan and Henry had collapsed into armchairs on either side of the staircase. A brief siesta. That was almost three hours ago. Megan was looking out of the window. Henry leaned forward and counted the number of squares between them. She was standing diagonally across from him, a distance of seven white tiles. This feels like a game of chess, he said. Is that why you keep moving about? You're putting your pieces in place for an attack? She turned to face him, her eyes narrowed. Chess is a cheap metaphor. It's what men use when they want to talk in a grandiose way about conflict. An argument had been building between them all afternoon, ever since Bunny had brought their lunch to a sudden end. The three of us need to have a conversation, away from Spanish eyes. Megan looked out of the window again, and there it was, as inevitable as the weather. The impending argument, a black stain layered over the blue sky. Chess is all about rules and symmetry, she continued, but conflict is usually just cruel and dirty. Henry strummed the guitar as a way of changing the subject. Do you know how to tune this thing? 
he'd found it hanging on the wall above his chair. I could play this if it was tuned. No, she said, and left the room. He watched her walk deeper into the house, successively smaller versions of her framed by further doorways along the corridor.